Good evening, I'm Ashley Scotland. Our top stories and news update today. 11 injured in Monrepo accident. Paddy prices increase for the second crop. Dominica looking at Guyanese contractors to rebuild the nation. An in court murder accused, a sentence to three years for drug trafficking. To begin tonight's newscast, we tell you that 11 persons have been rushed to the Georgetown Public Hospital following a vehicular accident on a Monrepo public road this afternoon. The accident caused the Route 44 minibus loaded with passengers to flip approximately four times. Nikhil John who filed this report. A woman is grateful for her life after a minibus missed her by a couple of inches. According to the eyewitness, she was standing at the corner of the road waiting on a bus when a minibus slammed into a motor car. The woman related that the driver of the motor car was proceeding south into the street where Melcher Furniture Store is located. Put on the traffic gate of a turn and the bus was overtaken. So when the bus overtaken, he lashed to him and spin him wrong. So he ended up at the bottom here and like he lose control and start turn over. He turned over four times and end up middle of the road and then afterward. The people um, and they start hauling the people um, come out and start for help or push the bus and turn it over, get out, the, start pull out the passenger them. But like 21 school children and he had some big people inside. But when I know how much big people, like about four or five of them big people or so, went in the bus. Yes, he was speeding all the direction coming from like overtaking because when he just turned, he just swing. He knock him and he spin the car around. The driver of the motor car, Alam Shaw, said he put on his indicator to turn into the street. The young man recalled that when he looked into his mirror, another vehicle was trying to overtake. So as I, yeah, I was coming to turn through the car now. So as I turn now, the bus overtake. When the bus overtake, I already went turning. He come and hit me on the right, the right hand side of the front of the vehicle. That's when he tried to pull inside. So as he tried to pull inside, that is when he toppled here, they go the stand on the road. He toppled three times in the end of there. Yes, yeah, the right side indicator. It's been turned into Melch Road, the same road here. The driver and the conductor of the minibus was immediately arrested and placed in custody. The minibus was heading up the east coast of the Marara. Eleven passengers were rushed to the Georgian Public Hospital for medical attention. <laughs> According to a rank at the hospital, the 11 passengers sustained cuts and bruises about their bodies. It was said by a bystander that the minibus was overloaded. However, the police ranks at the scene could not provide such details. The driver of the motor car is also assisting with the investigation. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. A delay of the holding of local government election is possible since there is no chairman of the Ghana Election Commission. This is according to the Minister of Communities, Ronald Bulkan. According to the Minister of Communities, local government elections scheduled for 2018 can be delayed since the chairman for the Ghana Elections Commission is yet to be appointed by the president. I believe, as we speak, that cabinet today may even in my absence, um, be discussing this issue. Balkan said discussions are ongoing for the local government commission between cabinet members. We have not had any um, official word from GCOM or from the CEO, and uh, therefore it is our expectation that the, that timetable um, could and will be met. The local government commission will oversee, monitor, investigate, and examine the actions of the councils. Minister Balkan said after the local government elections in 2018, a new town council will be established in Madia along with three neighborhood democratic councils at Barakara, Kurukuru, and Aranaputa. Local government election was last held in 2016 under the coalition government. Prior to this, under the People's Progressive Party government, it was not held in over two decades. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. 
Region 10 has been touted as being vital to the agricultural development and diversification of Guyana and the Caribbean by President David Granger. The president during a recent visit to Linden said a healthy Region 10 is part of the aim for a healthy Guyana. In addition, the head of state said the region is critical in the quest for food security of Guyana and the Caribbean because of its various types of land formations. Recognizing that the Caribbean region has an annual food import bill in excess of U.S. $4 billion, the president encouraged Lindeners to not only produce to ensure its own self-sufficiency, but rather to capitalize on the opportunities which exist for food export to the Caribbean. The month of November has been dubbed the deadliest month of the year in Guyana. It is against this backdrop that the national body that coordinates educational activities for motorists is again pleading with them to desist from driving under the influence of alcohol and speeding. Nigel John who has more. National Coordinator of the Guyana National Road Safety Council, Ramona Durgen, during an exclusive interview said, through studies and research, it has shown that the month of November is the deadliest month of the year in Guyana. Durgen explained that the council has also observed that because that particular month is dedicated to road safety awareness, the opposite is being reflected. She noted one of the major focus during the month of November is the White Night campaign. That campaign will target the entire country. However, the focus will be on the county of Barbies. It's not because of this crash. I want the public to know not because of the crash that happened and took the lives of the persons, but this is a pre-planned program, and we our target was Barbies indeed, and we will be having a, night, a white night drum driving um, education campaign in Barbies on the 1st of November. We will be launching the road safety month on the 1st of November in Barbies also, and uh, we hoping and trusting that these are some of the things will curb and help to reduce and keep the, the, the death rate at a very low um, rate. The national coordinator is of the view that because of the heavy drinking and social activities that occur during the end of the year, it contributes to the road fatalities. She noted that in 2015, approximately 17 persons lost their lives. However, when the White Night campaign was rolled out in November last year, the death toll was reduced. When we did the campaigns in, in 2016, there were only six deaths in November. So it is showing us if we do our programs and we continue to adhere to the traffic rules and the, and the, and the road rules, definitely we will, be, we will re keep the, the, the death rate very, very low. Only recently, acting top cop David Ramnerine stated that the force is registering a 25% decrease in road fatalities and accidents. Ramnarine had noted that there were 78 deaths as a result of 71 accidents up until the first week in October. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. More news still ahead. Do stay tuned. Decor and Gift Gallery has Christmas trees for you, you, and you. What's your size? 12 feet? 10 feet? 8 feet? 6 feet or smaller? We've got it all. Choose from green or white Christmas trees. Shop your Christmas tree early at Decor and Gift Gallery. This is Annie Bina. She's a clothing designer, and she really enjoys her work. She also likes to hang out with her friends. However, a life-changing event is about to occur. The mosquito that bit Annie Bina is infected with a tiny worm that causes lymphatic filariasis, also known as filaria. But what is filaria? Filaria is a disease that affects a person's lymphatic system, causing some body parts such as their feet or breasts to swell and eventually remain in a swollen state that cannot go back to normal. Filaria shows no symptoms during the early years. Untreatable chronic symptoms can appear sometimes as late as 20 years after infection. Since there are no symptoms in the beginning, most infected persons do not know they're infected, like Anibina. When the symptoms begin to appear, it will be too late. Nothing will be able to make them disappear.
Have you been bitten by a mosquito that transmits filaria? Are you sure that you've not been infected like Annie Bina? What can you do then, since you see no symptoms? Prevention is the best cure. A message from the Ministry of Public Health in collaboration with PAHO WHO. the GTT Pinktober 5K 10K Walk Run. Join the cause to raise awareness and celebrate the lives of all cancer warriors. Register for $2,000, get a limited edition t-shirt, 300 megs of data, a ticket to see Chronix or Travis Green or your favorite dance hall act, group fitness training at the National Park, and $500 goes directly to the Guyana Cancer Foundation. Together, we can make a difference. Do more with GTT, Guyana's number one network. Here's so with news update, welcome back. Some of the burden off the backs of rice farmers has been lifted as there has been a surprising increase in paddy prices for the second crop of 2017. The Guyana Rice Development Board revealed that there has been an upward trend in paddy prices at the commencement of their recent harvesting season. Find out more in this Lashana Gomes Cornelius report. What is responsible for this steady increase in paddy prices, according to the Guyana Rice Development Board, GRDB, are the recent rice paddy exports to markets in Mexico and Cuba, with Panama already on the list of other countries to have contracts with the government to receive paddy. Currently, the average price for paddy is between $2,089 to $3,300 per bag. Additionally, while Region 3 is normally paid the lowest prices for rice paddy, for the second crop it has recorded a significant increase. Regions 4 and 5, respectively, are also being receiving high prices per metric ton of rice paddy in the country. Despite these positive figures, GRDB is mindful of the report that a few millers are not paying according to the grade of paddy which they milled. GRDB claims that these millers are paying one price for all the grades of rice paddy. In this regard, the Guyana Rice Development Board is urging millers, despite a significant rise in the prices for rice paddy, all payments and certification of paddy must and should be made in accordance to the confines of the Rice Factories Act. Since the Venezuelan Petrocarb deal came to an end, rice farmers have been paid a minuscule amount for their produce. In 2015 and 2016, rice farmers claim to have been receiving as low as $1,300 per bag of paddy, while the cost of production remained the same. This has forced the farmers to give up on acres of rice fields. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lushona Gomes, Cornelius. The Caribbean Water and Water Waste Association, on its second day of the conference and exhibition, identified several issues the Caribbean is being plagued by, one of which is the lack of finances for persons to respond to any disaster. Find out more in this Yanis Abrams report. As the 26th Annual Caribbean Water and Water Waste Association hosts the conference and exhibition in Guyana, discussions are ongoing on how innovative and creative the 32 participating countries and members can be in the management of the precious water and water waste resources. Minister of Communities Ronald Wilkin mentioned that Guyana is pleased to host the conference and exhibition since there will be more participation from practitioners in the sector. The minister also mentioned that Guyana has invested in water infrastructure. Uh, the GWI has benefited over the years from attendance and participation at these annual conferences, but the presence here in Guyana, particularly of the exhibitors, affords us the opportunity to have more in-depth uh, discussions and engagements with exhibitors who have products relating to uh, water infrastructure and waste management. Uh, 
The panelists are stakeholders from waste and water sectors, a disaster management expert, a communications specialist, and an expert in gender affairs. Senior Advisor, Water Sanitation and Environmental Health Caribbean, Pan American Health Organization, World Health Organization, Adriana Svolgan mentioned that PAHO has been trying to instill rainwater harvesting within the hospitals in case of emergencies. The, when you have the, an island completely infrastructure completely destroyed, everybody becomes now self-reliant. And that's, I think, where rainwater harvesting is important and it was mentioned earlier. And we designed, I designed a hybrid system where you have a connection to the public supply with safe supply for drinking and rainwater harvesting that you use for toilet flushing. So in case of a disaster, when there is no public supply, you still have your rainwater that is of relatively good quality, even WHO recognized rainwater as a safe water source. And once you have a few thousand gallons stored, you have at least a few weeks uh, of water to, to for, you can actually make it into drinking with very simple measures. And you have also some water for toilet flushing and basic hygiene and bathing. This year's conference and exhibition is being held under the theme Promoting Innovation and Creativity in Water, Water Waste and Waste Management from October 16th through the 20th. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. The driver of the motor lorry which was involved in the accident along the number 59 public road has been discharged from the New Amsterdam Hospital. This was confirmed today by Mr. Stevens, who is the traffic officer in the division. The driver, Dan Paul Singh of number 49 Village Quarantine Brabies, was admitted at the Skelton Hospital and was subsequently transferred to the New Amsterdam Hospital. Singh was discharged from the hospital on Monday. That accident claimed the lives of five persons, including a child and a teenager. Although vagrant is a term used loosely in Guyana to describe the homeless, drug-addicted street wanderers, Matron of the Palms from the Ministry of Social Protection, Deborah Murphy, says the issue is much bigger than it really seems. Murphy urges all individuals to do their part in looking out for these individuals. Lashana Gomes Cornelius with the details. With the societal issue of vagrancy, countries recently made an announcement pledging their support to remedy the issue to ensure that the nation's people are cared for at all levels. However, while noting that there are a number of factors responsible for the vagrancy issue in Guyana, Matron Deborah Murphy of the Palms Geriatric Home stressed that it is also first and foremost the community's responsibility to step up and reach out to street dwellers, especially if that person is an elderly individual. While many homeless persons roam in parts of the city are elderly, Murphy warns that it is a criminal act to ignore the plight of the elderly, leaving them vulnerable to a variety of other issues living on the streets. First of all, and what people don't know, it is a criminal event for you to abandon the elderly. I mean, I don't know if people know and I don't think they do the amount of people that I would see from time to time who are aged and are left on the streets. As people age, they still want to maintain their freedom to be able to go and come as they like. But sometimes because they might suffer things like amnesia and so on, they might not remember to find their way home and so on. Um, additionally, some folks, their children might have migrated and they alone were left here and sometimes they fall ill and because they're alone, nobody knows that they're alone and at home. And that's why sometimes every now and then you find someone dead in a house and only days after the neighbors become aware. Um, then you have the out and out abandonment of the elderly, right? And so it's a multi-pronged problem. Um, it's a task for the community. It's not any one person, right? If you have an elderly person living in your community, the least you can do is look out for them, right? I mean, sometimes they may frown upon you, uh, you know, 
check in on them because they might think that you're invading the privacy, but you can give a little explanation and say, you know, we just check in on you because we feel that, you know, you, because you're part of us, that we need to be there for you. I'm quite sure that they'll appreciate it. Additionally, Murphy stressed while there are several no night shelters and homes for persons who are destitute, not much is being done to educate the relatives of such individuals to seek out the services of these homes and shelters. We are the hands and the feet of the Ministry of Social Protection and so when we see those things happening in our community and so on, if we report it to them, I'm quite sure they would send out persons to investigate and bring some order to the situation. But um, in the main, you do have those institutions. Additionally, we have Uncle Eddie's home, you have the Arch and Bio home, and you have many other homes for the elderly in the city. But then um, sometimes, maybe because there's a cost factor attached, um, maybe because people don't know how to navigate those services, maybe that's the reason that we have what we have on the streets today. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. Coming up, Dominica looking at Guyanese contractors to rebuild the nation, and City Hall would agree to a $10,000 container tax. So you're going to be a top executive. You're looking into possible careers. You're going to the university. Your parents are proud of your success. The journey begins here. Enroll your child now at the business school and let us help develop their knowledge and confidence to achieve their full potential. The Business School, educating tomorrow's leaders. The King has been part of our homes for many years. The King brings to us daily warmth to our heart in every cup. King Cup Tea, served in dozens of nations all across the world. Savor our traditional taste of tea or enjoy any of six tantalizing King Cup flavors. Blackcurrant, apple cinnamon, green tea, strawberry, or gray or peach. King Cup Tea. Enjoy the tantalizing warmth in every cup. Imported and distributed by Abraham Trading, Bar Street Kitty, and available nationwide. As a parent who works at home with my business located right here, I use Blaze High Speed Internet. At home, my daughter enjoys it for her educational learning apps, and I work at home as well, so the service is efficient for my business. Parents bring their children, and while the children are enjoying ice cream, the parents also relax and enjoy their free Wi-Fi services. Gafools proudly presents the perfect block, made by the most technologically advanced concrete block making machine in sizes 4 and 6 inches, perfect because it's the right ratio of cement and sand, with sifting added for greater strength. It's stress tested independently by the UG Civil Engineering Department and it's cured for longer life. It's now available at a lower price with a 12.5% discount. The perfect block from Gafools, setting a new benchmark. Dreams for self, family, community, country. It's a dream curve. The National Dance Company presents Dance Season 38, a montage of dynamic dance sequences. National Cultural Center, Saturday, October 21 and Sunday, October 22, from 20 hours. Tickets $1,700. Dream curve. Dance Season 38. Presented by the National Dance Company, a Ministry of Social Cohesion, Department of Culture presentation. Dominica's Minister of Housing, Land and Water Resource Management, Reginald Austri, says the country is in the mopping up stage following Hurricane Maria on September 18. Find out more in this report. The Minister of Housing, Lands and Water Resources Management, Reginald Austri, noted that currently Dominicans are still reeling from the devastation which gripped the island following Hurricane Maria. The government official noted that regional and international agencies have been able to assist in the rebuilding of the hurricane-torn island. However, 
In the face of rebuilding, the Dominican official is also reporting that the island is under a flood threat, heightening the possibility of flooding and compromising the availability of portable water for the islanders. And we're in the process of spending some $35 million trying to get our water systems back in place. We have already spent about $25 million doing that, and all of this is zero. We're back to square one from whence we came. The Dominican official said he is looking forward to have Guyanese experts in the various fields to assist in rebuilding the infrastructure. We've lost pipes. 12-inch pipes, 10-inch pipes, 8-inch pipes, 4-inch pipes, 2-inch pipes. The Chekhov storage tank just recently con uh, constructed. It's flat down. It has to be rebuilt. Access roads. And really, had it not been for resilience, we'd probably still be on our knees. The minister said, it is a lesson for the Caribbean and the wider world that climate change is happening. He claimed that many countries are beginning to place the topic of climate change on the back burner. But here we are paying the price of uh, our countries that pay no regard or no attention to the protection of the environment. And I'm really hoping that our partners here with us would assist us in getting the message across to those countries that climate change may not be an issue for them, but is in fact an issue for us here in the region, small island developing states. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. The town clerk, Royston King, says the council is willing to be in agreement with the private sector commission for five years to receive $10,000 per container, whether a 10 or 40 foot container. Here is more from Yanis Abraham. The town clerk, Royston King, mentioned that there would be a meeting between the mayor and city council and the private sector commission on a fixed fee for containers. King mentioned that this was one initiative of the council to rake in much needed revenue but due to circumstances, they were forced to use an interim fee of $5,000. Of the increase in container fees, you recall some time ago, Council proposed $25,000 per container. After discussions with the Private Sector Commission, we have decided to use an interim payment $5,000 per container. The town clerk stated that the interim fee is not enough since containers are damaging city roads and take up much space in the city. King further said that within four weeks, a proposed price will be discussed. However, this is not enough, and Council is in the process of holding discussions with the Private Sector Commission for us to have, if not the 25000 per container, at least $10,000 per container, and we are willing to enter into, agreement, enter into an agreement with the private sector commission for five years to receive $10,000 per container, whether it's a 20-foot container or a 40-foot container, that we should receive that. In 2016, City Hall enforced the container fee at a price of $25,000. After negotiations between the council and the private sector commission, an interim fee of $5,000 was agreed to. Before a container can leave each of the city wharfs, they must pay to the mayor city council the fee. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. The National Agricultural Research and Extension Institute earlier today signed a contract with SNK Construction Services for $19.2 million to improve river defense on the coastland. The construction specified for a total of 600 meters of brushwood dam to be installed along the four shores of land of plenty to Bushlot as Equiba Coast Region 2. Construction of the structures will begin immediately and last for four months. The structures are expected to reduce the amount of wave velocities, allowing sling mud to settle out on the lee side of the structure. Over time, the elevation of the foreshore will increase to a height suitable for mangrove restoration. Earlier on Tuesday, the PAMS Geriatric Home held its annual health fair in observance of the Month of the Elderly. The month of October is dedicated to the elderly worldwide. Here is more from Lashana Gomes-Cornelius. 
Matron of the Palms, Deborah Murphy of the Ministry of Social Protection, expressed that a goal of the health fair is to reach out not just to the residents of the Palms, but to the neighboring communities for residents to tap into some of the many free health services offered there, such as blood pressure testing and blood sugar testing. At the end of the day, we hope that the public at large would have benefited from an outstretched arm, right, to help them to learn, to understand the importance of taking care of oneself, especially as one age, you know, and um, eating right, getting exercise. Um, if you discover that you have maybe a chronic disease, how to cope with and make the necessary adjustments. Further, Murphy is calling on the relatives of the residents of the Palms to support the fair and to visit their loved ones regularly. Murphy claims for an institution which houses approximately 196 old aged citizens, it is disheartening to see some of the residents without regular support from their families. This, she says, can sometimes have a negative impact on the emotional welfare of the residents at the Palms. Nonetheless, Murphy asserts that the staff at the Palms, which falls under the guidance of the Ministry of Social Protection, is tirelessly working to ensure that the health, physical and emotional needs of these aged individuals are met and sustained. We always would prefer, even though residents are here, that family members play an active part, you know, in supporting them emotionally and psychologically while they're here. But there are times when that is not forthcoming. And we would appeal to the general public, if you have a, a relative here, come and see them. It's no fun to be aged and to know you have loved ones who are alive and you're here and you're just left. I mean, the staff here, they give a good service. They are friends with the residents. I mean. People aren't always a straight line all the time. People have emotions and so on. But the staff, the residents, they cope. You know? But we would like to have the relatives come and be a part of their lives still. Friday, October 20, is scheduled to be the Palms of Fundy, which will be held at a national park starting at 10 hours, while October 25, 28, and 31 are scheduled for other cultural events. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes Cornelius. Stay tuned for regional and international news as well as the Guyana Stock Exchange. so much windex for clean windows all them fancy curtains it's not even christmas hi girl mind your own business i got big plans but bb your house don't even have windows hey uh, girl you ain't think i know it ain't got window yes i know it ain't got window but look mokesh promised me that he carried me down by the window factory when he come home it Eccles, it named Beeson. Like you know nothing, girl. Right now, everybody talking about how Beeson got the strongest windows. Plus, they got a deal right now. If you buy 10 windows, you get a free bathroom window. So I could mind new business instead of you minding me own. Beeson Windows and Doors, serving Guyana with the highest quality standard windows for your home, office, or commercial building. Wesson Oil. Get a case of six bottles of six pint canola oil for only $9,000. Members Mark Olive Oil also available. Imported and distributed by Isaac Investments. Available in all DSL branches and leading supermarkets countrywide. Isaac Investments. Located on the third floor of the Regent Multiplex Mall, Regent and Wellington Streets. Telephone number 231-0142 or 231-0143. Taste to the people. 
by uncapping the real Guyanese flavor at the Uncapped event October 27 to 29, 2017. See agroprocessors unleash their full potential as they exhibit new technologies and innovations and uncapping of new products. Uncapped taste the real Guyanese flavor. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens available in tinted or clear complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. Regional and international news taken from the BBC. The United States has condemned the Sunday's elections for state governors in Venezuela, branding them neither free nor fair. The State Department said ballot papers had been manipulated and the polling stations moved without public notice. President Nicolas Maduro's supporters won 17 of 23 state governorships, but opposition leaders have alleged a fraud. The opposition Democratic Union Round the Table Coalition has refused to recognize the result. Venezuela's socialists win governor seats amid fraud claims. The National Electoral Council announced the election results and has been accused of pro-government bias by the opposition. President Nicolas Maduro hailed the landslide as a victory for Chavismo, his party's brand of socialism, named after former President Hugo Chavez. He said it was proof that Venezuela has the best electoral system in the world. Meanwhile, a 10-year-old boy is now in the hospital after falling about 30 meters over the railing at Niagara Falls into a gorge below. Police told the BBC the boy was sitting on the railing so his mother could take a picture on Sunday. He apparently lost his balance and plummeted backwards, striking his head. A helicopter took the boy, whose injuries were initially described as critical, to McMaster Children's Hospital. Police said the boy was now in a stable condition and they were still investigating the incident. The boy was visiting Niagara Falls on the Canadian side with his family when they stopped to take a picture at the Horseshoe Falls, the largest of the three waterfalls that make up Niagara Falls. About a dozen people have gone over the falls since 1901, usually intentionally inside a barrel or some other kind of protective device. Caught free brooms, MTV. News update. Here is what went down at the George Young Magistrates Courts. Men were on Tuesday remanded to prison by Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan for two firearm-related charges. Mark Young, a 39-year-old businessman of Duncan Street Kitty, and Jamal Henry, a 22-year-old Mason of Diamond, East Bangdamarara, both denied the two offenses. It is alleged that on October 11 at Queen Street Kitty, the duo had in their possession a .38 revolver along with six matching rounds while they were not the holders of firearm license. According to reports, on the day in question, the duo was busted by police in a room at a Kitty Hotel with a bag containing the said firearm which was found on the bed. Police prosecutor Neville Jeffers told the court that Young had confessed that the firearm belongs to the other defendant while Henry is contending the gun belongs to Young. With no special reason raised for bail, the chief magistrate remanded the duo until November 3. Meanwhile, a 26-year-old pork knocker has been remanded to prison for the murder of popular Durban Street Georgetown businessman and was also sentenced to three years in jail for drug trafficking. Aubrey Bob appeared before Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan and was not required to plead to the capital offense 
which alleged that, on October 12 at Kitty, he murdered a 64-year-old Godfrey Scipio, called Saga, during the course of a robbery. The unrepresented man was remanded to prison until November 1. It is further alleged that on October 13, at William Street Kitty, Bob had 58 grams of cannabis in his possession for the purpose of trafficking. Bob pleaded guilty to the charge and was sentenced to three years in jail along with a $34,000 fine. According to reports, on October 12, Scipio was shot once just after being attacked and robbed by a lone gunman outside of a Kitty hotel. He was reportedly leaving the hotel in the company of a female friend and was about to enter his car, which was parked in front of the building, when he was accosted by the gunman. The gunman discharged a round, hitting Scipio to his abdomen before managing to get away with his gold chain. Scipio was rushed to a private city hospital, where he was pronounced dead on arrival. Detectives, after reviewing the CCTV footage attached to the Kitty Hotel, was able to arrest Bob a day later. Bob was arrested at his William Street Kitty home and the suspected cannabis was found in his room. He was recently released from prison after serving time on a robbery charge. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. The Guyana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 743. Let's turn our attention to the Demerol Harbor Bridge schedule. Technology Wrap is next. Stay with us. Future Shop is the absolute best place to shop if you're looking for quality products at the lowest prices in the widest possible variety. Choose from a vast array of custom-made quality wooden furniture in endless designs, electrical and household appliances, clothing, cell phones and accessories, and much, much more. Pio's Pizza Shop and Household Appliances, located at Anna Caterina, West Coast Demerara. Free delivery available. Credit! No, me know the secret! I like, oh, you know the secret? Everybody know the secret! <laughs> you can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick fit for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily, Monday through Saturday, to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. 
At GTT, Pinktober is the month we celebrate the lives of those we love. Pinktober is a time we raise breast cancer awareness. And Pinktober is the moment we all come together to make a difference. During Pinktober, your $2,000 purchase at GTT gives you data, a ticket to see Chronix, Travis Green, or your favorite dance hall act, and $500 goes directly to the Guyana Cancer Foundation. Together, we can make a difference. Do more with GTT, Guyana's number one network. Everything is connected. Our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. and welcome to Star Technology Wrap. As always, I'm your host, Rajesh Lachan, along with Yannick Sobers. And this week, we will be discussing point-of-sale solutions available right here at Star Computers. Yannick, go ahead. Yes, so now is actually a very good time for customers who are looking to upgrade their point-of-sale systems. We have uh, 10%, up to 10% off on selected point-of-sale equipment at Star Computer right now. So let's say, you know, you want to upgrade your printer, maybe your cash drawer, scanners, all of that we have available right now at Star. Then if we're standing in front of one right here, just take us through it. Okay, well, as you know, point of sale equipment, it consists of the computer system, which would be your monitor, your mouse, keyboard, CPU. And so, you know, actually right now, you can get the monitor, the keyboard, the mouse, and the CPU for just six to $9,000. And that's on the promotion right now. And the printer? Um, the printer, you'd be getting 10% uh, off the printer at this point right now along with um, the, the scanners, you can get up to 5% off on those too. So different discounts for different items. And when will this deal end? This deal ends on October 21st, so you, can, you have until the 21st of October to take advantage of this deal right now. Apart from the deal and the point of sale solutions, what else happened here at Sirs? Well, as always, you know, we have different deals going on at this, at this present time. You can check our page on Facebook, like our page, share it with your friends, and thank you once again for tuning in. Well, thank you, Yannick, and that's what we have for you in this week's edition of Star Technology Wrap. Do join us next week, Wednesday, for another edition. Well, that sums up our newscast for tonight, but before we go, here's a recap of our major headlines. 11 injured in Monrepo accident. Paddy prices increase for the second crop. Dominica looking at Guyanese contractors to rebuild the nation. And in court, murder accused, sentenced to three years for drug trafficking. The newscast can be viewed online on MTV's Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. The news will be rebroadcasted later tonight at 23 hours and at 6 hours on Wednesday, October 18. On behalf of our news team, I'm Ashley Scotland. Thanking you for watching. Good night.